Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. Scientists with the European Space Agency's Rosetta mission are writing a new chapter in the history of comet science. However, institutional science's understanding of comets is less certain today than ever before. Recently, the Rosetta team published their first scientific papers following their successful landing on the Comet 67P. Yet the scientific summaries have raised far more questions than answers. While news media around the world have lauded the mission's remarkable human achievement, it must be noted that the feat was at best a partial success. The primary purpose of the mission was to penetrate the comet's nucleus and gather a large sample of material. However, on landing, the probe encountered a terrain nothing like the icy, snowy surface it had been designed to withstand. After bouncing into the shade of one of the comet's rocky cliffs, the team ultimately resorted to using a mechanical hammer to attempt to acquire a sample for testing. According to the ESA team, the hammer was, quote, unable to make more than a few millimeters of progress even at the highest power level of the hammer motor. In the ESA's words, the hammer was bested by, quote, mechanically strong ice. But what ice is the ESA referring to? To the astonishment of mainstream scientists, the complexly layered, pitted, boulder-strewn, desiccated terrain of 67P has not revealed the abundant water ice that the standard model requires. Indeed, according to a recent Nature report, Scientists found that 67P's dust grains shattered on a target plate, revealing they contained no water ice. In the wake of this and other surprising revelations, it is useful to look back at the past predictions of the standard comet theory. Consider the image on your screen. On your left is an illustration prior to the 1986 mission to the comet Halley. In the center is the ESA team's rendition of the cometary terrain they expected to encounter at 67P. On the right is an actual image of 67P's nucleus. Yet today, the assumptions behind the drawing on the left remain unchanged in any meaningful way. Institutional science still insists that comets are primordial aggregates of ices and dust, the leftovers of the early solar system. With the cooperation of science media, it would appear that the theory is unfalsifiable. However, unbeknownst to most in the general public, an alternative theory of comets does exist. For decades, the electric universe theory, as developed by physicist Wall Thornhill, has made the seemingly outrageous claim that comets, asteroids, and meteors were electrically machined from planets in a relatively recent epoch of planetary instability. Dune-like ripples, fields of boulders and rubble, craters, pits, cliffs, rocky spires, a complexly layered terrain, and the absence of water ice are all consistent with the electric universe theory of comets and comet origins. Here is Wall Thornhill with our first report on the initial papers from the Rosetta team. The first papers on comet Churyumov gerasimenko or Comet 67P, were published by the Rosetta team last week. Once again, expectations of a boring lump of ice and dust were not met. Instead, there were ever more surprises, a natural result of an incorrect theory of comets. In Science magazine, under the headline, Comet Close-Up Reveals a World of Surprises, diverse landscape of 67P suggests an unexpectedly complicated origin we find the usual mantra. Many of the intriguing landforms the main science camera OSIRIS has found testify to the power of the sun, which heats up 67P during part of every orbit, igniting jets of gas and dust that re the surface of the comet. Other discoveries could be primordial, dating from the comet's formation more than four and a half billion years ago. However, Nicholas Thomas, an OSIRIS co-investigator, and an experimental physicist at the University of Bern, confesses, the sun alone can't have created all the layers, topography and chemical diversity that scientists see. I find it hard to believe at the present time that 67P was originally homogeneous. 
you've got to produce all of these diverse morphologies on the surface with that one energy source. I find this tough. Of course it's tough, because years or decades of work that was based on generally accepted false assumptions must be abandoned. The lead article in the special section of Science magazine reporting on the Rosetta mission opens with Comets are the best sample of primitive solar nebula material presently available to us, dating back 4.57 billion years to the origin of our planetary system. This bald statement is not fact but fiction. No one was there as witness or timekeeper. It hasn't been shown that nebulae around some other stars are planet-forming accretion disks. It's going too far to argue the complexity of the comet suggests that the comet-forming regions of the early solar system were more turbulent and chemically diverse than theorists have thought. Pushing the anomalies so far into the past that anything is possible doesn't advance science. And some of the features, like layering, the dune-like ripples and boulders with wind tails, show the gaping hole in the accretion story of comets. These are planetary processes. Now that Comet 67P and most comets show little sign of the ices required to fuel jets of gas to sculpt their surfaces, why cling to the story about comets being primordial, when all the evidence is plainly against such an idea? Scientists need to be conscious that we are a tribal species, and as such we utterly disdain things that challenge our world view. And after centuries of repetition, the story of the birth of the solar system has fixated our world view, to the extent that discoveries of stars forming along glowing filaments in a decidedly non-gravitational manner, and thousands of planetary systems that don't conform to our worldview, have had no effect on that story. Cosmology is a belief system sustained by confirmatory bias. No alternative to the old primordial gravitational accretion model of the solar system is believed possible. Meanwhile, Comet 67P is reported to show rocky-seeming terrain, which refers to the low density of the comet, far less than rocks on Earth. Perhaps the comet is a polystyrene model. Rocky-seeming is an expression that denies the evidence of our eyes and exposes our fundamental ignorance of mass and gravity. No more serious accusation can be levelled at theoretical physicists. Modern science has no solid foundation for our worldview, our gravitational cosmology. I predict that will be Comet 67P's greatest lesson if we have the wisdom and courage to discard our tribal myths. Let me be clear. Mass is a property of matter. The mass of the comet is not equivalent to the amount of matter in the comet. Mass is a measure of electromagnetic energy stored in matter according to the best-known equation in physics, E equals mc squared. So Comet 67P can be composed of rocky minerals while exhibiting low mass and a density like cork or wood. Low mass implies that the rocky comet is under low electrical and gravitational stress. Gravitational stress electrically distorts the atoms within a body by pulling the heavy nucleus towards the centre of mass. As a small body far from any planet and having electrons stripped from its surface in the solar discharge, Comet 67P is under very low internal stress which is reflected in its low mass. It doesn't demand it be a fluffy object with a porosity of 70 to 80 percent. And if there's any argument about the jets issuing from Comet 67P being electrical, it's only necessary to look at the way nearby filamentary jets are aligned and draw together. This is natural for coronal discharges issuing vertically from a surface and the subsequent attractive force between parallel currents according to Ampere's law. The effect is seen clearly in images of the sun's corona. It is not a natural formation for gas under pressure expanding through random vents into a vacuum. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to thunderbolts.info.